Welcome to NetTouch Plus. My name is Jeffrey Wei, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to password protect a folder. So think about it. Many times for small projects, you don't need to go through that process of creating a login form and authenticating the user if really only you and maybe one or two other people will ever access the back end of your system. So maybe you have a blog and it's your personal blog. You've built it from scratch. You're the only one who will ever post there. Well, in that case, just keep it simple and take advantage of an HD access file to password protect your admin folder and be done with it. Move on to the next step. So I will show you how easy that is to do. If I switch over to terminal, I am now within my site's directory. So we're going to create a new one and we'll call it password protect tutorial. And I will CD into that. The next thing we need to do is have like a entry point and this will be the public file. So let's just go ahead and populate that right now. This is the public file. Anyone can see this. So this will just represent the regular files that anyone can read. All right, good. The next thing we need to do, of course, is create an admin folder. So within this admin folder, we're going to have another index.php file. And let's go ahead and edit that right now. But this will be the secret area. So this is the secret area that only admins can access. So if we do our job right, regular users will never be able to see any file that is contained within the admin folder. So now if we take a look at our directory structure, this looks fine to me. So let's open this up in Sublime Text 2 and get started. The first thing we need to do is create an HT access file within the directory that we wish to protect. And that way we can override the default settings for that specific folder. So I will go ahead and do that right now. Dot HT access. All right. The first thing that I need to do within here is give it a title. And this means when a regular user tries to access a file within the directory, we're going to show a login panel and it needs to have some name. So let's say auth name is going to be admin only. The next thing I'm going to add is what kind of authentication type are we going to use? In this case, just username and password, keep it basic. So auth type is going to be basic. Next, we need to give it a path to where our passwords file is stored. And this file is very simple. It'll just contain the username, a colon, and then an encrypted version of their password. And you can have as many of these as you want. So if you want to give yourself access and maybe your partner access or maybe somebody else on your team, it's really that easy. So we'll say auth user file, and this needs to be the full path to where that file is stored. So you don't want to do anything relative. That's not going to work. So in this case, I would do users, Jeffrey, sites, password, protect, tutorial. Now, ideally, what you want to do is keep this outside of your document root. In this case, just for expediency and so that I can include everything within one download folder, I'm going to store it within the root folder right here. However, once again, you want to get that outside of your root. So store it somewhere else. Or if the document root is set to, for example, the public directory, just bring that HT password file one directory up from that so that people cannot gain access to that. And that's important. Now, in this case, I've named it .htpasswd. That's not set in stone. You can call it whatever you want. That said, it is a convention. Okay, so now we've created a path to that file, but we haven't created it just yet. And that's okay. We'll come to it in just a moment. The final thing we need to do is specify what we are requiring. Well, I want to require a valid user. And that's our HT access file. So now I can close this. And the next thing we need to do is create our HT password file. But before we do, let's just view this in the browser and see what would happen right now. So here I am within the root directory. There's our index.html file. And then when I go to the admin directory, we still load that file. This is the secret area. And of course, ideally what we wanted to have happen was for the username and password dialog to pop up. And only if those credentials matched would we show this file. Now, of course, it's showing us this because we have created all of this, but we have not created the password file. And that's the next step. Now, you have two options here. You can manually create the file, ht password, and then you would specify your username followed by a colon and then the encrypted version of your password. So with PHP, you would do something like crypt1234 or your password, or Apache offers its own tool to do this automatically. And that's what we're going to take advantage of. So I'm going to bring up the terminal once again. I'm still within the root of my project. And now watch if I run HTPASSWD 
And if you have Apache installed correctly, you will get this information. So in our case, we want to create a new file. So we use the dash C. So let's go ahead and create one. HT password, we're gonna use that tool. I will pass dash C to create a new file. The file name will be called HT password. Just follow that convention. And then what is the username? I'm gonna set it to Jeffrey. And the password, let's set it to NetTuts. And there we go, that's all been done now. So if I go back, you'll see that it has now added this new HT password file. Once again, I need to stress, this file needs to be protected and outside of your document root. Also, a little tip worth noting, notice there's an extra line here. You'll want to keep that on. That can cause some strange issues if you don't. So make sure there is an empty line break after that. All right, so I've saved that. And now we come back. We have our user file that is correctly pointing to the file we just created. Now let's give it a shot. Once again, go to the root. That's fine. Anyone should see that. But now as soon as I try to go somewhere within the admin folder, that should be protected. But we have this problem. It's not seeming to register at all. So what's the problem? We know we've done everything right. We've created the password file. We added the HD access file to our admin folder, but still we're not getting anything at all. Now you may or may not get this if you're working along. If you are getting the exact same screen as me, that means that there is likely a problem where you are not being allowed to override the default settings in your Apache config file. So let's see if we can fix that. I'm gonna go back to the terminal and your Apache config file may be different. In this case, I know mine is going to be, and I'm going to edit it with them. It's within the ETC directory, within the Apache 2 folder, and it's called httpd.configure. Now that's open, and I will look for the keyword allow override, like this. All right, so that first one, that's not what we want. I'm gonna hit M to go to the next occurrence. Now you can see we are configuring the defaults so let's see what the defaults are. Well, the default has allow override equal to none, but that's okay. The default should be very strict. I'm gonna hit N to go to the next one. And now you can see we have the specific settings for my HTTP docs folder. But if I go down, you'll see it's still set to none. And what we see right here is allow override controls what directives may be placed within the HT access file. So in this case, I'm going to change it to all and I will exit out of there like so. Now I'm going to restart Apache, sudo apache control restart. And now let's give it another shot. So let's try it again. We go to index.html, that's working fine as it should. But now if we go to the admin directory, now we get this pop-up where we have to enter our credentials. So my name, and we called it nettuts as the password. And now we do have access. But let's see what would happen if we did not have access. So I'm simply going to change the username to Jeff just to make sure that it refreshes because otherwise it will keep you logged in. So I'm gonna give it Jeff, but enter a wrong username or password. And notice that it just immediately pops back up. There we go, good. So one more time, enter it correctly. And now we're into the back end. So there's a couple things worth noting here. First, it's important to know that Apache will not let users access your HT access file or the HT password file, which in our case is in the root, but it shouldn't be. Notice we do get a forbidden. And there's a specific section within your Apache config file that specifies if somebody tries to request that file, don't give them access. Next, if you do encounter some mistake, maybe you get a server configuration error. So for example, I will go to HT access and let's just delete a few letters there so that it's referencing a file that doesn't exist. Now let's change my username so that it will refresh. And now notice I'm getting this internal server error. So if you get this issue, first come back to your HT access file because nine times out of 10, that's going to be the problem. See if you can figure it out. If you can't, check out your error logs. So if I come over here, you need to figure out where are your error logs stored. And one way you can do it is just searching through the configuration file. So let's search for the error log directive within the Apache file, and it's called httpd.config. Now you'll see that it is stored within here. So at this point, we just need to edit it or simply view it. And now you can see all of the error logs that have occurred in my case. So in this case, I'm going to delete everything and then start from scratch. So one more time, we will reload the page couple times we get our error. 
So now, if we edit the file one more time, if there are specific error logs, they will be displayed within here. And if they aren't, you should also check the custom error log file. But again, most of the time, it's going to be something very simple. Make sure you didn't make a typo. Make sure the file names are referenced correctly. And now if I reload the page, Jeffrey, NetTuts, now it's working as we would hope. And now we have password protected a folder. And this would only take in real life about 30 seconds worth of work.